so much with personal communion uh, and we will do a practice um, at the mini retreat we'll have a practice um, so that they can actually taste an unconsecrated host and sip a little um, unconsecrated wine so that we don't have any weird faces at, at personal communion or um, you know so they're used to it but they kind of know what to expect so that they're not so nervous okay in second grade the Archdiocese wants all second graders to be able to define Eucharist as a celebration. Um, so what, what would you tell your child in terms of, or what would you want your child to answer when you ask your child, what are we celebrating? What do we celebrate in the Eucharist? Receiving the body and blood of Christ, absolutely. Um, the real presence. So it's, um, we're celebrating receiving God. 
Anything else? So it's a four chase. Four, four chase. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. We're all together. We're celebrating being part of the mystical body of Christ with, with all of us together. Um, we're celebrating that, that this is preparing us for heaven. Very much. Anything else that we're celebrating? One of the things that I would like to celebrate is just the fact that God has so much love for us and he wants to give his very self to us. He wants to indwell, live inside of us, and have that life of Christ grow inside of us. So that, that intimate love that God has for each one of us, uniquely and especially, um, celebrating God's love and God's gift of himself is, is a huge piece to the celebration. So if your children can give you an intellectually, you know, honest answer to um, what are we celebrating in Mass, then that, um, that qualifies for their mastery level skill there. And then here's another mastery level skill, um, understanding that Mass is a liturgy. Now how do we define liturgy? Um, liturgy is the work of Christ. It's a work of Christ on behalf of all of the people for all time. Um, and we work with Jesus in Jesus' mission to save the world. So the, the word liturgy actually means the work of Christ on behalf of the people. So we help, we, fight, we pray for the world, we join with Jesus in sacrificing, um, and we join our sacrifices to Jesus' sacrifice that's offered and we're nourished by the meal. So as we get into those more sacrifice meal pieces, um, <clears throat> we understand part of the Mass is Mass as a sacrifice. So at the offertory, um, particularly, that's where the Mass um, kind of focuses on the sacrifice. The essence of Mass, the, the biggest meaning, the biggest essence of Mass, is that Christ here is offering himself God the Father for the salvation of the world. So you'll see the priest acting in persona Christi in the person of Christ. He's offering Christ in the person of the priest is offering Christ in the consecrated um, host and one up to the Father for the salvation of the world. So what does that mean for us? What's our peace in that? What's our piece as we are part of the mystical body of Christ? Where does that put us? We're part of the mystical body of Christ. We're uniting ourselves to Christ. So we're offering, we're uniting our sufferings, our offerings along with the priest. So we're joining with the priest in offering um, all of, like all of us, uh, you're here at the meeting tonight and you'd much rather be at home putting your feet up, having a drink and watching television. That's a sacrifice that you're making. Tomorrow you're going to get up and you go to work when you'd much rather stay in bed and, and sleep late and, and get up and um, have a late breakfast. But it's a sacrifice that you do for your family um, when your kids are sick. It's a sacrifice to get up in the middle of the night to feed a baby or to take care of a, you know, a child that's thrown off. Of. But you do it because you love your children and you know, all of you in a million times all week long are doing a ton of different sacrifices that you're doing as a Christian to be loving to your family, to your co-workers, to you know, all the people that you meet. You're taking all those with you when you go to Mass and you're joining them with Christ in the consecrated wine and host and offering all that up to the Father. And what a tremendous um, gift that God gives us. If you think about the most important thing to God in the whole world is the salvation of souls so that he can be with his special people for all eternity. And he puts that responsibility in our hands. It's up to us to help him with that. Um, he can die on the cross 
but not everybody chooses to follow Christ and not everybody chooses to accept that. So our sacrifices and our um, things that we uh, put, our sacrifices and prayers then can give God the, um, the opportunity to give graces to all these people who don't pray and who don't know to follow Christ, who don't know about Jesus. So the most important thing in the world to God and he gives it to us as a responsibility to help him in his work. So it's a real honor to help God in his work of salvation. And we do that at the when we're offering things, offering ourselves together with Christ. Any questions on that? I'll just direct it to the phone. Yeah. Okay. Then we have, after God receives all of the wonderful gifts of our prayers and our sacrifices then he's so happy with his people he delights in us as his people and he delights then to give himself to us to help us be even better to help us do even more um, so he nourishes us with his real presence and that's a meal for us nourishment for our souls so that we have peace as we're doing our work um, so that we have a sense of um, what we're supposed to do, or um, a sense of direction and guidance and light. So John, um, in chapter 6, talks about this bread which I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. So for Jesus, this was hugely important to keep that light of Christ alive within us. Jesus Christ found a way by which he could ascend into heaven and yet remain on earth. He instituted the sacrament of the Eucharist so that he might stay with us and be the food of our soul. So Mass is one of the places of greatest encounter with God that we can have on earth. And there are four ways that we encounter God in the Mass. Anybody tell me what one of the four ways are? What are the, one of the ways that we encounter God in Mass? The Word of God. The Word of God, absolutely. In the readings, the Old Testament, the New Testament, God's Word is spoken. We encounter God in the in the Eucharist, absolutely, his real presence, his soul, his divinity, um, we encounter him in the Eucharist. Where else do we encounter God? Absolutely, each one of us has the Holy Spirit indwelling inside of us. All of us who are baptized uh, have that sanctifying grace inside of us. And so we are Christ to each other. And when we gather at church, we are the mystical body in this geographical area. Um, so we meet it in each other. And where's the last way that we encounter God in Mass or Christ in Mass? The, the priest That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so whatever your spiritual needs are for your children, whatever they're facing, whether they're got nervous about a test coming up, whether they just um, had a spat with their good friend and they're upset and don't know what to do, whether they're facing a bully, um, whether they're wondering what to do and, and what high school to go to or, you know, what to major in or whatever. Whatever their spiritual needs are is available in mass. So living a sacramental life helps us achieve our purpose in life because our whole purpose is to be united to Christ and have Christ's life inside of us and that nourishes that life. It helps us to become the person we are created to be. Um, it brings us greater happiness, greater contentment, greater peace. So it's, it's um, inherently good for us. It's kind of what we were created for this. So it's good for us. Um, it fosters our personal experience and improves our quality. So how do we prepare our children is there anybody that um, has been, you know, had children in First Way Community before? 
Did you find anything that was helpful in preparing your children? Any words of wisdom for us or uh, practices that you did that you found that were helpful? I just had one that I first meeting of the reconciliation last year. And we were just, we did role play. And, you know, it, you know, we rolled his eyes. My daughter, who's in second grade, has rolled her eyes, but it, um, it makes it just. Less of, a shock, less, less of a shock and just um, takes away some of that stage fright. Yeah. Did you use like a little NECA wafers or to, to practice um, first like communion or a cracker? A cracker. A cracker. Yeah. Yeah, role playing is usually helpful to kids. Anybody else have any other things that were helpful for them? Okay, then let's go delve into our packet here. <coughs> On the second page, um, the Archbishop wants all sacramental years for the whole parish family to celebrate together and prepare together. So although the school does some preparation by itself and the PRP kids do some preparation and the homeschoolers do some preparation on their own, there are a couple things that the Archbishop wanted us to do together as a parish family. So one of the things we're going to do to get ready for First Holy Communion is do the walk through the Mass. And so there are two times there you can hit each, either one, whichever fits in your schedule. Um, and then we're going to try and join our mini retreats for First Communion and the practice, again, to make it more convenient for you so you don't have to come back a second time. So because we're doing that, it's important that you attend the particular time that fits with the mass schedule that you have. So for instance, um, if you are scheduled for the May 3rd Mass at the 11.30 a.m. Mass, you'll want to come to the earlier session from 9.30 to 11.30. Or if you're scheduled for the May 9th Mass at the 3 p.m. in the afternoon, you'll want to come to that early morning, 9.30 to 11.30. Everybody else will come to the, e the afternoon session from noon to 2 because we will be practicing, uh, you'll have your pew set out for you. Um, we will be practicing coming up and receiving, um, receiving the host, receiving. So we'll practice with an unconsecrated host and an unconsecrated one, um, uh, as well as take a tour of the church, and take a look at the sacramental um, vestments and colors and um, items that they'll, that they'll see at Mass. Okay, any questions about the practice? If you can't make it that day for some reason, or you can't make it that time, contact Tina and she'll meet with you individually and kind of help let you know which period you've got. Does anybody need anything particular like um, gluten-free hosts or um, anything like that? And I think Tina will also want to know if you have anyone in your family who needs a wheelchair, or if you need that wheelchair um, accessible aisle, or if you need any of your family members, those are kind of things that are helpful for us. Um, then there's on the back page, there's a, the dress code. So for the girls, um, if you you want to wear um, you want to wear a dress that has um, like sleeves or it's like two or three fingers thick. If you have like a spaghetti strap, strap dress that you've already worn, just put a sweater or something, a wrap or something over it. Um, you can wear like a, um, some of the girls wear a tear with a veil, um, just as long as it's not over their head because that makes them hot and sometimes they can get themselves nervous and, and hit. So just keep that away from the uh, head. Um, you can wear gloves, but you'll need to take those gloves off at the time of the first look. And then for the boys, dress slacks, dress shirt with a tie. Um, you don't have to wear a, a suit, a jacket. If they have one and they want to wear it, that's great. It's not mandatory. You don't have to. Any questions on the dress code? Then you have a letter from Tina. Um, and then you have 
discerning readiness for First World Eucharist. These are good talking points to bring up, like at your table or if you're with your child and, and waiting for another child in basketball <coughs> practice and you've got five minutes and the two of you are there and you've got a captive audience. Um, some questions to bring up that, that uh, lead to some good discussion. On the back page of that is tips for families. Um, and then there's some words to know. If you're wondering how their textbook describes things like sacrament or describes um, things like the mass, that kind of thing, these are the words taken out of their textbook. So this is what they're hearing from their teachers. So you want to uh, see how they talk about it. Uh, then there's a prayer after communion. If you want to, um, you're welcome to cut that out if you want to help your child. Um, Remember to, when they come back from communion that that's a very special time that they can have their special time praying. And then there's just a column page. Uh, they can put themselves at the Last Supper and draw themselves in here if they want. Uh, just to call it. Does anybody have any questions then about preparation? I have banner kits here. If anybody needs a banner kit. Does everybody have their banners working on it? Just bring these to the actual course holy in advance. That's okay. Well, if nobody else has anything, then let's uh, go with our concluding prayer. Thank you, Father. Uh, loving God, pour out your blessing, blessing on our beloved children. That during this time of sacramental preparation, they may go closer to you and come to know your special love for them. May this time of preparation be a time of blessing for our families and our community and unite us all in your great love.